guys, it's Flavia here with Daft Star. I'm sitting next to the amazing cable car. Um, you guys, we're so excited to have you here. We're excited to be here. Perfect. Um, to start off, so I know that n uh, none of you guys are from the West Coast. Um, you two are from the East Coast, you're from England. So since moving out here, what would you say is the fastest thing you've learned about uh, showbiz in LA? That it's super easy to become a megastar. <laughs> It was almost no trouble at all. We basically got off the plane, and everybody that was around the plane just started clapping, and they were like, you've arrived. They provided us entourage immediately. They provided us entourage immediately as soon as we stepped off, and then we've sort of gone from there. Complimentary drinks and, uh, and attire. It was, it, was, it was a little swanky. Branding companies. I feel like we're scaling down more than anything else at this point. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> you guys tackle a lot of genres in your music. Um, what would you say is one you would never touch? We've answered this in another interview. Techno. However, we would love to touch Happy House. I mean, we did do a dance remix of one of our tracks off the EP called Two Time Love, which is a bit dancey. But, um, yeah, in general, because the question basically says, what would you never do? I'll just supplement by saying that we'll try anything at least three or four times. Okay. Anything. Okay. <laughs> um, now I listened to your EP album, Ride. It's really amazing. I'd probably uh, describe it as like sex for your ears, honestly. It's probably the best uh, first EP album I've heard in a long time. And I just want to say that, <laughs> yeah, and I read that you described um, your sound as, um, I have a quote from you guys. You guys said you wanted music that was raw and exposed and lyrics that are sexy and tragic. So that's quite a statement. Um, who would you say is your biggest influence right now in terms of like how you go about your sound? Women. <laughs> okay, that's your only influence. I like that. I, I don't disagree. Any? We, <laughs> we all listen to a lot of music, so we're all influenced in different ways. But that's the, one of the benefits of everybody listening to so many different types of music and bands is that we're influenced very eclectically and we bring it all together and we just throw ideas on the wall and um, I'm completely lying. The only people I ever listen to is the people Ryan tells me to listen to. <laughs> okay, and I read that you guys also um, have a lot of different like musical influences like Justin Timberlake, Maroon 5, and The Script. I read, do you guys ever worry about um, listening to artists that are very popular right now and current, like having that kind of overlap your own sound? Um, I think it's more that we've been compared to them rather than we like draw from them as influencers. Like, our influences are super diverse. Ryan, you played thrash metal through his teens. I grew up with blues, jazz, soul. Um, Nate, I don't think you've ever listened to any music. Um, no, and I've never listened to a song in its completion in my entire life, actually. Um, I have somebody else finish all my music that I write as well. It's a strange thing. Um, and since there's three of you, how would you each describe your sound in one word? Sex. Sex. Super califragilisticexpialidocious. And I ain't got the time to waste playing these games. when you perform live, do you like to incorporate a lot of cover songs, and if so, why? Uh, we actually did do a cover of Justin Timberlake's That Girl. Um, his new record, 2020 Experience, is fantastic. So we wanted to pay some respect to someone that, that has had an incredible career and is incredibly talented, and we also wanted a challenge. So um, breaking down one of those songs into a three-piece of just a couple of guitars and uh, some light percussion, which is how we did it, was a real challenge, but we wanted to make it our own, so we did it that way, and, and we put a video of, of it up on YouTube. And um, I guess that answers the question, you know, when we do a cover, we want to pay respect, and we want to make it our own, and we want a challenge. I'm really, really thankful that um, we all three of us took giant leaps from 
you know, 3,000 and 6,000 miles from our hometown and it landed in a place that really supports what we do. So I'm incredibly thankful that I get to wake up every morning and work on my art form, something that I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do for a big part of my life. Um, now, where can your fans uh, go? Where and when can your fans go and see you guys next? We don't, we don't really play. <laughs> Um, no, we we do. Uh, okay, so the 8th, we're actually doing a TED Talk uh, at their Desire Seminar, which is really cool. You can actually buy tickets to that. They asked us to come, yep, it's in Malibu. They asked us to do a, a performance on that, and we are honored, because I so respect the TED Talks in general. Um, uh, something that's going to be a little more local is going to be December 13th at Room 5, 143 North La Brea uh, in Hollywood. And then we have another one, Genghis, Genghis Cohen, January 31st. But the easiest way to get all this information is just to go to our website, which is wearecablecar.com. So wearecablecar.com. You can join the mailing list and check out our tour schedule. Yeah. And then we have Instagram, Twitter, everything, Google+, Plus, everything. One, two, one, two, three. She was like a freight train coming full speed. I'm running every break, bathroom stall. Don't understand why I did it man enough to admit That all I want to do is go home And you awake in your bed, toss and turn, grab your head and Throw my thought up against the wall There's gotta be a way to forget what I did besides Boom on the floor, last call, oh please Don't you tell me that I can't go Oh, oh, say it If I remember reading what you had a guilty night Wrapped up in his arms And me awake in our bed Toss and turn